Sony just released not one, not two, but three brand new lenses. And this little guy right here is the world's smallest ultra-wide APS-C zoom. These are kind of a big deal. You see, people ask me all of the time what camera they should get. And usually that means they're kind of in like the beginning stages of their filmmaking journey. And the problem is, I feel like there haven't really been too many budget but good quality cameras to recommend. The price can get really out of hand very quickly. And I really thought the small and affordable Sony ZV-E10 was gonna be a breakthrough camera until I realized the lenses they're pretty limited. Until now. See, you're not gonna put a massive full frame lens on a tiny APS-C camera like this. You want APS-C lenses. And we have three really great options now. We have the 15 mil F1.4, which is tiny and lightweight. The 11 mil F1.8, and my favorite, the 10 to 20 mil F4, which they are claiming is the smallest ultra wide APS-C zoom. <laughs> I believe it, cause this thing's pretty tiny. This is the previous Sony 10 to 18 mil. This is the 10 to 20 mil. Look at the difference. This is already tiny. This is like, oh man. Now maybe you're freaking out at me like, why the heck in 2022 would I buy a crop sensor camera? Give me that full frame goodness. Okay, calm, calm down. Number one, biggest reason is the size. This is a Canon 15 to 35. This is like the best vlogging YouTuber lens that I could recommend. Here is the equivalent of the APS-C. <laughs> Uh, I, point proven. And it's not just the lenses, it's also the camera body. So this is an FX3, which is a pretty compact and small full frame camera. This is an APS-C camera. Like there is a big, big difference between an APS-C size camera and this bad boy. And number two, probably the biggest reason is that APS-C is so much cheaper than the full frame equivalent, both for the cameras and the lenses. I don't know the exact pricing of these lenses, but the 11 mil F1.8 will be around five to $600 for a really high quality lens. The 15 mil F1.4 will be between seven and $800. And the ultra wide zoom lens, one of the most important lenses that you could get will be between seven and eight hundred dollars which is actually at least minimum a hundred dollars cheaper than this guy the old 10 to 18 mil just to put that into perspective the equivalent Canon full frame lens cost three thousand dollars literally a fraction of the price and size so those are the biggest reasons why in 2022 you would still be getting an APS-C crop sensor camera. These are some high quality APS-C lenses and that's why I'm getting so excited about the ZV-E10 because I feel like this camera will become way more popular than it is already because of the price and size. <laughs> this is a full on perfect like YouTube camera vlogger setup right here, tiny, and more importantly, affordable. So let's do some testing and see how these lenses perform. Isaac's still learning. At this point, if you're really confused, it's probably because you don't know the difference between a full frame and an APS-C size sensor. So we're literally talking about the sensor that captures the photos and video. And an APS-C size sensor is just smaller, which results in a cropped in image, 1.6 crop compared to a full frame sensor. And then in general, it's just not quite as good as a full frame sensor. So low light capabilities aren't as good. The image isn't as nice. So yeah, full frame is better, but a lot more expensive and big like we talked about. Isaac, have you ever bought an APS-C size camera? Uh, it was, uh, oh, I can't remember the year now. I'm so <laughs> old. Uh, back in the 80s, it was an Aria Lex. Uh. Yes, a lot of Lexes are APS-C crop. Super 35 is the other, other term for an APS-C crop. That's like the cinema term for 1.6 crop. Yeah. I just made that up. <laughs> Oh, 
both of us couldn't handle the heat, couldn't handle the heat. That's perfect. Stepping in geese poo. Okay, I, I gotta say, while I'm shooting this, like this setup is so small and light, you can get so close to the ground, so easy to use. And I, I, I'm using it right now without like a tripod or anything like that. And that's, that's, I feel like that's the way to use a little, little camera package like this. Lenses so far look incredible. Haven't seen it on the computer, but very happy so far. Very excited. Also, have you guys seen, uh, I started a podcast, my own podcast, Manny and Picho is, I don't know if it's dead, but it's kind of dead right now. We got an episode with Chris Howe, Danny Gewurz, Dan Becker, and Jake Fru. It's casual conversations with other YouTubers about YouTube life, how they got into YouTube. Uh, Chris Howe had some really interesting stories. Loved hearing how Danny Gewurz got into YouTube, and Dan Becker's stories about how embarrassed he was starting YouTube is incredible. You gotta listen to it. Every Tuesday, new episode. This one's going on. This one, this one, there won't be any hiatuses at least not long ones, every Tuesday, new podcast. Do you think I'm gonna stick with that or? The podcast? Yeah. Or no. It? Yeah. No. You guys really gotta calm it down with the poop. So much poop everywhere. Back to the office, battery's running out. Let's talk more about how these lenses are. More importantly, how the ZV-E10 is now with these new lenses. Brought home a little friend. Got something right there. Oh, I love these. I love to snack on these. Okay, so this is the ZV-E10 with the 11 mil 1.8. And this is a Sony a7S III with a 16 to 35. The quality still is way better on the Sony a7S III than the ZV-E10, but there's definitely a place for APS-C still in 2020, especially with new lenses like these. I very much enjoyed just filming them with this little, this thing is so small and nimble and just like, it's like, if you could feel how lightweight the setup is, it's actually crazy. Uh, so yeah, I think that this is pretty great news for all you ZV-E10 users, or if you've been looking to get one. Now is the time. I definitely recommend all three of these lenses are really nice. It's a really nice range to have that really wide uh, 11 mil, then the 15 mil, which is kind of like a, like a 35 mil in full frame land. And then this, this, tiny little ultra wide zoom. This would be by far my most used lens if I was on the ZV-E10. It really makes the ZV-E10 way more usable for me. If I had to choose which of these lenses to get, if you could only choose one, I would definitely go for the zoom, the 10 to 20 mil. After that, it's a toss up. Both of these, the 11 and 15 are really nice. I prefer the wide lenses, so I probably go for the 11, which is kind of like a like an 18 mil. It's it's a, kind of a random focal length, but it's really fun to use. But if you want nice portraits, definitely go for the 15. I do have something better for you to snack on. Welcome to heaven. <gasps> Maddie. Hey, try one. You gotta try one. This is the first time eating a cruffin. A cruffin? This is called a cruffin. Just gonna eat it over over your ten thousand dollar laptop. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. That's <laughs> delicious. It's like a croissant mixed with a cinnamon bun. Yeah, crispier, crunchier, better. That's the Maddie Hapoya channel. Yeah.